In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an original data source uh, you know, that has some structure that, that's in somewhat of a nice format, but may not be exactly what we want, how to put it into R and how to manipulate that data into something that we can use for forecasting analysis. So. What I have right here is from the BLS. The BLS is the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and I have accumulated a number of time series for the state of Georgia. So um, this, is, this is something that we want to try to look out for. Um, occasionally when analyzing data, there may be just one source, which is a large data dump, and this is it. So what this has is the unemployment rate for every county in Georgia for uh, all periods of time up until the present that were collected. So, you know, we're, we're maybe looking at uh, 30 or 40 years of unemployment rates, and it's at the monthly level. Uh, Additionally, this data set is broken out into some other things that are not as desirable, like uh, state level and municipality level data, and those are coded differently. And so, so the data dump is nice, but you can see that that as we just scroll through it, it it's just a, it's it's a it's a lot of data to look at. It's a lot of data to consider, and additionally. Um, we have some things that are identifiers here that we, we may not know what they are. And so it's, you know, somewhere in this information, somewhere in this string is the labor force, is the unemployment rate, is the um, employed. It's not necessarily obvious how to get there from here. And so... I have some knowledge about what this data set in, in, includes, but I'm going to show us how to download this data set, put it into R, and turn it into something that is potentially a bit more productive for us. So what we do is here, we've got this large data set, but what we can do is we can just select all on this page, and I'm in Firefox, so it would work as well in Internet Explorer, Chrome, or uh, Safari. We're going to select all, and we're going to copy it. So I'm copying all of this data onto the clipboard. Now, the data are copied onto the clipboard, and I'm just going to use a text editor to save it somewhere. And so within the Mac, the text editor is located in the applications, and we would just go to text edit. Okay? And it's a new document. So I have copied it, and I'm just going to paste it in here. Now I've pasted it in here, okay? And as you can see, this is, this is a large document, okay? And so just, just tons of, tons of information in here. But you can see that we have a series ID, a year, a period, a value, and some codes associated with it. And so... There are five potential variables, and they're separated via tab. So it's tab delimited, but it's not comma-separated values. So rather than trying to replace tabs with commas and put it into Excel and do something like that, I'm just going to save it as a text file. So I'm going to save. I'm going to save it um, to where I use our files, and we're just going to call it unemployment info. Now, you can choose the extension that you want by typing it in, but we're just going to leave it as a .txt. We're going to click Save. Okay, so it's unemployment info. And I don't know how many observations are in this data set. This is not an interface that I can use to uh, analyze the data in any way. I'm just taking the data from the Internet and converting it into something that is a text file. And I'm going to show us how our studio can read this text file in to analyze data. So I'm going to click out of this, get rid of these applications, get rid of the internet, and we're in R. Okay, now there are two ways that we can go about it, and I want to point them both out. Um, but the first, and maybe the most kind of intuitive, is just to click File and Import Data Set from 
uh, from text. And we can just do from text right here. And it's going to be from this unemployment info.txt. And we hit OK. Now, this is 21 megabytes of data, so it's a lot. It's just information. So I hit open. OK, and, and something comes up called import data set. And so I can rename it to whatever I want here. Let's just call it uh, unemployment. Um, but you can see that the input file is being described, and you can see R has identified that it is separated via tabs. Okay, and so we can we can scroll around here, and this is how R is planning to import it into the data frame. Okay, and there are headings, planning on treating this as a heading, and then this is data, and has identified it as a tab. Now you could have white space, comma, semicolon. So R allows you within this separator to have potentially the option to select something else. So if the data were separated by, say, white space, but are identified as a tab, you'd want to change it. Row names, okay, automatic. Decimal period, quote, double quote, we've got some comments, etc. Not applicable strings, we're just going to call them NAs. Okay, and, and let's just import it right here. Okay, now. Here's what the data look like. Uh, but, but let's take a look at the console. Let's take a look at the console. How could we have done this by ourselves? We could have typed in the following code. And I could have had unemployment as the name of my data set. I'm assigning it read.delim. OK, and I'm just going to put it in the file. OK, so if I were to clear out, let's say I just clear out what was in my console. I just sweep it out of the environment, clear out my environment. Yes, remove it to so the data set that, you know, well, this is the data set that are uh, created for us. But let's say I get rid of it. I could use this code read.delim instead. And I'm going to click on it. Now I'm going to sweep it out. Yes, get rid of it. And this is reading in, in a file. R identifies the appropriate delimiter. Okay, so let's just run this code. Run it. Here we go. It's going to show up in the environment. There we are. Okay, so we have 386,000 observations in this data set, and we have five variables in the data set. So let's, let's just have a look at the data set. Uh, here is a series ID. This is going to contain a bunch of useful information for us. Uh, here is the year the data were observed. Here is the period the data were observed. So if you're thinking about this data set, start to think ahead. I'm going to try to combine the year and the period into a T sibyl. So I can analyze that time series object within R. Now I've got the value of these associated series ID and I have these footnote codes which are seemingly largely blank. So I, I have some work to do with the data set in order to clean the data. I cannot use the data as is. I cannot turn value into a t-sibyl as is because year, if you look at it, uh, so if we just put our cursor over year is numeric but period is a character and so neither of those are date variables. And we need to construct a date variable. Okay, so we, we have work to do. And let's call let's let's make a new data set called unemployment. Uh, let's let's hold off on making a new data set. Let's let's make a new variable first. And I'm gonna type in unemployment and I'm gonna put a dollar sign, but I'm gonna write a new variable because I want to uh, put the new variable within the R data frame. Okay, and so the fir first thing I'm going to do is try to clean up this period variable, and we'll call it month. Okay, and I'm going to assign it in R. Now I'm going to use the function as numeric, as numeric. I'm going to refer to that period, okay, but what I want to do is strip out the number exclusively from the period. So if, if we go back to the data set here, you can see that I have an M01. I'm going to strip out the M and get rid of it with what's called the substring variable. This is a base R 
command. So this is this is the core data management tool in R is extracting part of a string. This is an essential kind of data management 101 skill is extracting parts of strings. Okay, and we can do that within R. We can do that within the substring variable and it is as it sounds. I take a subset of a string. Okay, so let's look at the uh, nomenclature associated with the substring variable. X is the variable. So what we're doing is we are going to extract a substring from a character vector. And period was described as a character and I am going to make it numeric by putting it as dot numeric. This is kind of neat. So I'm taking numbers out of the string and I'm going to tell R that those are numbers. If I don't tell R that those are numbers, it will think it's an ID. Okay, so I use the substring variable and I'm going to go to unemployment, dollar sign period. I start with the second character, I stop with the third character. Okay, we run it. We're just going to run this code. We went from five variables to six variables. Let's check it out. There's the month. Okay, we don't need this period variable anymore, actually. We're going to delete it later on. Okay. So, as.numeric converts a character variable to a numeric variable. Sub, substring extracts uh, a subset from a string of text. Okay. Uh, I want to do a little bit more with the substring variable because as you can see this series ID contains a ton of information. Now this is stuff you would have had to look up off the BLS website and this is part of this is this is another part of data management that I'm not showing you is when you get something like a series ID, you actually have to go in and kind of understand what it is that the series ID is, is doing. Okay, and so, you know, for, for us, what, what we're going to want to do is extract different parts of the series ID. So the first five characters are going to tell us whether it's state levels, county level, metropolitan area data. The next two characters tell us the state. So there are 50 states, and each state has its own unique two-digit identifier corresponding to uh, where that state falls in the alphabet. Uh, then there are the next three digits are indicative of the county. And they also go in alphabetical order, although there is some skip numbering. Finally, the last two variable the last two digits are uh, what type of time series it is. So 03, for example, is the unemployment rate. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna try to take out the first five characters. I'm gonna try to take out these characters in between. We only have Georgia, so there's no need to worry about the 13. And I'm gonna try to take out the last two char characters. And all three of those variables are going to be uh, of use to me as I um, analyze the data. Okay, so let's take out the first five. Let's call this one unemployment data type. And this is, this is maybe data source, I think is a better word, data source. And we're just going to substring the unemployment underscore series ID, click on it. Uh, the first five, okay? Identify uh, the source, county, state, metro area. Now the next thing we're going to do is um, take out the time series. And those are the last two characters. So 
So we actually need to go back and count the number of characters. I want the last two. How many characters are there total? Well, there are five here. There are five more here. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There are 20 characters. I want the last two. So I'm going to take out 19 and 20. And you could treat this as, as numeric if you wanted to. And that would be okay. And then we're going to take out the county, we're going to call it ID. Um, we could treat this as a number if we wanted to. Treat as a number if you wanted to. All right, so I'm going to run this code. What should I expect this to jump from 6 to 9? We run it, jumps from 6 to 9. OK, so we have uh, some stuff that we want. And now my data set looks like this. I have the month, the time series, the ID, have all been extracted from the series ID. So I, I parsed it into useful pieces. All right, let's go back. Now, this is not, again, I, I've, I've done some cleaning up of the data, but I have not actually constructed anything that I can plot or treat as time series data. So uh, I need to start to work on that and there is some cleanup that we'll have to do in the intermediate time. So let's call this unemployment one. Okay, and I'm gonna make a new data set from the unemployment. Now you may remember that when we have the percent, the right arrow and the percent sign, I'm piping a function. So I'm attaching all of these functions to the unemployment data set. Now, the left arrow and the hyphen means that I'm, I'm constructing a new data set from an old data set of which I'm piping functions into. And so just, to, just as kind of a reminder, we need a, a fair number of packages to do this with, and this comes out of the MagRitter package. Now, we're going to filter the data. Filter, you can see, comes right out of dplyr. Okay, so this is a data... Uh, data cleaning tool within R, it's a package, and I'm going to first filter the data source. I just want counties, so I type in equal equal, close parentheses, L-A-U-C-N. That is the local area unemployment county data. I don't want any of these other regions, okay? Now if we go to the unemployment data, you can see that there's also <clears throat> If we were to, uh, well, let's, let's say we filter it, you can see that there, there are actually uh, data for, for month 13 in the data set. I, I don't want month 13 because I want to treat this data as uh, um, monthly and there's no 13th month of the year. So R is going to scream at me. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. And the month 13, you can think of just kind of a summary of the data. How to get rid of it in R is I type in month exclamation equal 13. Okay, so the exclamation is a not equal. And I'm going to pipe that through. Now I'm going to get rid of some stuff. I'm going to get rid of, if we look at the data, you can see that we have period. I don't need that anymore because I've converted that into the month. I don't need the footnote codes. I don't need the series ID anymore. I have parsed what I want out of it. 
And, and, and finally, I, I don't need the data source. I'm only selecting one data source, I, and so I, I don't need it anymore. Put the minus sign in front. If you don't put the minus sign, then all you'll have left is the data source. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to run this code. Run this code. Now, let's go back to this. What I'm doing is I'm going to take this data set from nine variables down to five variables, and I'm going to remove a fair number of observations from the data set. So I'm removing all state, metropolitan area. I'm, I'm, I'm stripping it down to the county. I'm going to run it. We run it, and now I've gone from 386,000 observations down to about 235,000 observations. So we have reduced the size of the data frame from maybe being, uh, you know, 386 times 9 to 235 times 5. So we, we've removed a lot of data. Okay, and it was very easy to do. All right, so uh, none of this has actually helped us make the data into a T civil. So what we want to do is actually construct uh, something that we can use for data analysis, and we'll do that with unemployment two. So we're going to attach unemployment one. All right. Now I'm going to use the mutate. Mutate is going to allow me to create a column. And you can see that what filter did is filter removed rows. Mutate is going to add new variables and preserve existing ones. Okay, and so what, I'm, what I want to do is uh, create a new variable called your month. And you can see that you can see that uh, your month is a function in T Sybil. But I'm going to call the variable year month, and we're going to set it equal to year month in the T symbol. Now, in the T symbol for year month, um, what I want to do is have the year variable included in there, and also have the month variable included in there. So, um, I'm now trying to explicitly define the time series features of my data. Okay? Explicitly define the time series features of my data. So what we do is we use the paste command. Paste is a base R and it, what it does is it concatenates vectors. Okay, so we are going to paste together the the year is going to come out of unemployment one. Year. And the date is also going to come, the month is also going to come out of unemployment one. Okay, and I have one parenthesis. So I have year month. Both are numeric. Close the parentheses for paste. Close the parentheses for year month. Close the parentheses for mutate. Let's attach it. Let's call it a T symbol right away. Uh, the key for the T symbol. So, what a T symbol needs to be able to do is I just need one, I, I can only have one unique number for each year and month. So, my data set is by ID and by time series and my index and we got to concatenate that together with the C I'm sorry and my index is the year month so time is indexed to the monthly level and observations are identified as being unique by the county and the type of time series that they have uh, okay, so let's uh, let's try it out. We'll run it. Okay, so un unemployment two has 
has been created and you, you can just kind of type it in to see what it is. Unemployment is a T-Sybil. Identified at the ID and the time series level. So what we have here are data that have been taken from a primary data source online into R and now it is something that we can use for data analysis. Uh, just to comment some of the data, the filter uh, selects observations by row properties. Select eliminates columns or keeps columns. We used year month to define the year and the month as T Sybil needs a unique key to identify each observation. Um, the, the logic is that we can only have one number per year month in the T symbol. Okay, so we have unemployment two, and let's say I just want to select Carroll County out of it. Well, there there is an issue here. Which which county is Carroll? So oftentimes when we we've done some some data analysis, we we actually have to merge in um, something that's called like a crosswalk, and we did not merge in a crosswalk. So what I would like to do for unemployment, let's go back to unemployment one and I'd like to merge unemployment and a data set that is not in my data set yet called the crosswalk. I have a crosswalk. I have a crosswalk And I'll show you what it is in uh, in my in Excel. You can see just it's very what the crosswalk is is very smooth. It just is the ID and the county. Okay, so Carroll County is ID forty five. I might like to know that explicitly. Okay, so crosswalk, I just read underscore Excel, crosswalk dot XLSX. I'm gonna run that real quick. It's gonna show up in the data. It's gonna be a small data set. Okay, and then I'm gonna create unemployment. I'm gonna merge unemployment across crosswalk by equal ID. Let's see, we we may need a quotation there. Okay, so uh, we have that in there. Okay, and that's unemployment one. Now we're going to just keep what we did before. And we should should be back down to But you know what, let's actually, we've got, instead of using unemployment one, 
let's use let's call this unemployment two and have unemployment one. So now unemployment too, I, we've, we've got it together. We've got unemployment too with uh, the same number of variables that we had before, but we have a county name, okay? We have a county name in, and what we're gonna do is now turn this unemployment too into a time series in the same way we did before, just changing numbers. So we're gonna have what we call unemployment three. Also, it's the same T symbol. It just has uh, county names. Actually, let's stop it just for a minute. We need to also update the unemployment one to unemployment two here. So let's try it one more time. Now we have unemployment three and you can see the different types of data here. We have a data frame, data frame, data frame, t sibyl. Okay, so that little crosswalk detour aside, this is just signs IDs, signs county names to ID. Merge, we're gonna just merge in the county names. And then I'm going to cut and paste so we have the, the correct order of our, our code. And unemployment three is the T symbol. So let's take a look at unemployment three. Really no different from unemployment two when it was a T symbol. The only thing is that now we have like the actual county. And we still have 234,000 time series observations here. So, let's do a little analysis. Let's call it Carroll County. So Carroll, we're gonna take unemployment three. We're gonna attach it, we're gonna filter uh, county equal Carroll. And then we're just gonna filter again time series equal three, that's the unemployment. We're gonna auto plot uh, the value. Let's take a look at what that is. So we're gonna have a new data set. It's a T symbol, and we're going to auto plot the value for the time series.
And let's actually just leave this here. We'll run it. You can see that our, our new uh, T symbol in the environment is Carol. Oh, did it not? Oh, we don't have the. Sorry, we need to get rid of the piping. Let's run it again. Okay, and now we just we can take that Carol data set. We can just auto plot the value. Let's see what that looks like. Value not found. Oh, sorry, we need to pipe pipe the function, not assign the function. Okay, this is the unemployment rate in Carroll County. And you can see here that um, the reason the auto plot didn't work previously is because I had a data set and it was like a component of the data set. But you can see unemployment has uh, varied quite a bit. You can see it went up a lot after the first recession that we had in 2008, and it's been steadily declining. You can see kind of a COVID spike here. Um, this is the unemployment rate. for. We have 369 observations. We have data all the way from the start of 1990. We have about 30... Uh, plus years of data here. And so just to, to kind of clean things up, this is we um, we created a small data set using just Carroll County. We only have the unemployment rate. Here's a plot of the unemployment rate. Okay, so let, what we can do is we can we can create a decomposition of this time series. So you, you can see there's there's some seasonality here in the time series. It spikes at sort of these these regular intervals and it falls at regular intervals. So we can we can create what's called a decomposition, decomp1 of Carol. Um, and we'll model it using STL decomposition. And, and the what we're going to decompose is the value. So we're going to extract the trend. We're going to extract the seasonality. And what's left is the remainder here. We run it. There's a decomposition that shows up on the right. And now let's uh, look at the components of it. Maybe we can auto plot the components of it. This, and you, you can see that here is the detrended time series. You can see it's been smoothed out. And you can see here is the seasonality. As you can see, these kind of like regular periods of peaks and valleys. So it, it, it looks like a, a spring in a way. Um, but you can see here's you know peak seasonality, bottom, peak, bottom, peak, bottom. And, and this is just corresponding to seasonal employment that's retail. Uh, but you can see that the detrended time series looks looks like this. And so oftentimes in forecasting, we use this decomposition of the time series to extract what's called the seasonally adjusted. This is the seasonally adjusted data set. You can see that it's completely smooth through here. And here is the seasonality. Now, if we take the value of the time series is equal to this trend plus the season, and this is what's left over. And you can see that the error, or kind of the remainder, looks a lot like white noise, so very difficult to predict those values. And then we had this kind of this huge spike here 
um, where both the trend and the seasonality could not catch up to COVID at the very end. So the decomposition is a method of extracting the trend, seasonality, and remainder, a la classical decomposition. It is a little bit more sophisticated than that, but that's the, the key. This is the, and then this is just a description, description of the trend and seasonality. So if, if we, we went back to the, we just went back to the console quickly and just, just instead of, of, we just wanted to look at the components. What you could see here is, um, you can see there's a trend and then, then here's additional seasonal employment, unemployment, but then as we, we get closer to Christmas, we subtract. And this is a typical way of deconstructing a time series. Okay, so if, if we wanted to, we could conceivably graph the trend over the value in R. Okay, and let, let, let's try that out. I'm going to give it a shot up here in the, in the R, R uh, studio interface, the, the R script. But let's say we wanted to um, go back to Carol. Uh, and we just auto plot the value again. Then we add an auto layer of the component of decomp one. So I'm plotting the value, but I'm going to add the decomposition and let's add the trend, the color is equal to red. Then I want to add a label. Let's just have it be the month. Xlab is labeled. Then I want to add another label, and that's going to be un unemployment rates. And then maybe I want to add a title. GG title, this is a GG plot, um, unemployment in Carroll County. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Let's see if it works. Just cut and paste out this uh, other stuff. There's the value. And now let's let's try to let's try to put a label on it first. Okay, we've got unemployment rates by month. Now let me just check and see here we have See if we can add in an auto layer here. And we're going to take the components of decomp one. Trend 
see if we get there. We'll try it one more time, see if it works. Let's give it one more shot. And you can see what what we have here is this is the seasonally adjusted time series in blue. And the actual time series is in black. So it's often easier to forecast uh, the blue relative to the black. But you can see that if you went back to the previous plot um, of the decomposition, that this is the, the time series up here, and the trend is plotted over the value. Now we can export this as an image, and you can change the scaling. So if you don't like the width, you can make it a little longer. And that is just been saved as our plot one in the directory. You can you can pull it out of the directory to see what it looked like. Okay. And this is an easy way to export graphs in R. Okay, so a lot to lot to take in here, but we read in data from from online and it was an original tab delimited data set, and we did some things to convert it to something that we could use as a T sibyl. We also merged in another set to assign some county names, and then we did some basic plots and some components. This last plot uh, plotted the trend on top of the time series. Now one other thing that we can do is um, we can model the data using exponential smoothing and this is just something that I want to put out there as something that we can do in R. Um, we can model, we could model um, we could do a forecasting model here for Carol 1. And if we just type in what Carol 1 is, this, and maybe we could, we could view the uh, components of Carol 1. We have an exponential smoothing model for Carroll County. So these are possibilities for us as we, we start to analyze our data. Is we, can, we can actually uh, look at the, the report. We can actually look at the report actually of the exponential smoothing model. But here we can actually uh, predict the unemployment rate with a forecasting model um, that's appropriate. And here they chose a, a seasonal model that doesn't have um, a significant trend. And so R will automatically pick an appropriate exponential smoothing model. We'll talk about this more. Um, but just to kind of summarize, we can take raw data directly into R, clean it up a little bit, and plot it. And that's very useful. 